Hello everyone and welcome to Alumni Talks. In today's webinar, you're going to learn more about the MBA program at Macomb Graduate School of Business at Bentley University. My name is Urnica and I'll be the moderator today on behalf of Unimai. I would like to thank you all for joining us and to welcome our panelists, Gordon Berridge, Associate Director of Graduate Admissions at Bentley University, Anya Gellern Dunko, Assistant Director of Graduate Admissions at Bentley University, and Amritra Chaudhary, Bentley MBA alumna. We'll start with an overview of the Bentley MBA and its advantages. Then we'll continue with a panel discussion in which Amrita will share with us more about her academic experience and how it contributed to her professional development. Your questions are more than welcome. So if you have any, please write them down in the chat box anytime during the webinar, and we will take the time to address them in the Q&A session at the end of it. Now I'll give the word to Gordon to present himself and the MBA program and Bentley. Wonderful, thank you, Zunita. I really appreciate that. Hello, everybody. Uh, once again, my name is Gordon Berridge. I'm the Associate Director of Graduate Admissions here at Bentley University. Thank you all so much for joining us today um, here for our discussion with one of our alumni and to learn a little bit more about Bentley University. I'm also really excited to be joined today by one of my amazing colleagues, Ms. Anya Gallant dunkel She's our Assistant Director of Graduate Admissions here at the McCallum Graduate School of Business at Bentley. So she will be in uh, managing the chat room. So if you have any questions or anything like that, you can feel free to post them in the chat, uh, in the chat box, or you can go ahead and use the Q&A session at the top, put your questions there. We will be taking questions for everybody here on the panel today uh, near the end of our session uh, as we go through this process. So a little bit about Bentley University, for those of you that might not be familiar, um, like I said, we have uh, here at Bentley University, we have the McCallum Graduate School of Business. The graduate school was started in 1973, although Bentley University started in 1917. So Bentley University, we've been teaching business for well over 100 years. We are located just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. For those of you not familiar with um, the US geography, it's in the Northeast coast, just about a couple hour drive north of New York City. And uh, Bentley University is located in Waltham. It's about 11 miles or 19 kilometers just outside of the city of Boston. <clears throat> we currently have about 1,100 graduate students at the university, and they represent 29 states and 58 different countries from all around the world, and about 46 to 48 percent of our international of our student population are international students. So one of the things that really makes Bentley stand out is the amount of technology that we have implemented into our programs at every level, particularly even in the MBA program. So our MBA program, you can choose different concentrations. And so here we look at some of our technology labs. So for example, we have the Huey Center for Financial Services. This is our trading room. It's one of the largest trading rooms of any university here uh, in the US. It is in a partnership with uh, NASDAQ, which is one of the trading indices here in the US, particularly focusing on technology. And we also have a, a partnership with Bloomberg. So the NASDAQ partnerships, we are one of their backups. So they have many backups, we are one of them. So they run all of their numbers through our university. So that when you're in the trading room and you are seeing NASDAQ numbers or any numbers from any of the other indices around the world, these are real time updated numbers as they're going through. So you are getting real information. And the way that you access that information is through our Bloomberg terminals. We have uh, several dozen Bloomberg terminals located here. And as part of that program, you can get your Bloomberg certification for free. And so you get a, really get a chance to utilize those Bloomberg terminals. And those Bloomberg terminals, it's the same hardware, the same software that all of the financial institutions are using. So when you're in that room, all of the technology that you're using, all of the hardware, all of the software, all of the numbers, everything is real. The money's not real, but everything else is. The, you know, the, the money piece, obviously, when you're going, you're not trading real money. However, if you are interested in actually working on some real trading and doing some real um, funds trading, we do have something called BIG, B-I-G, Bentley Investment Group. And this is an opportunity to participate in a real fund that's um, sponsored by the university. It's a million dollar fund that you can actually participate in and actually do some real trades and, and work within that organization. We also have the User Experience Center. The User Experience Center is where our, um, our students are learning all about technology integrated with business, particularly 
uh, in the user experience center. We have real companies coming in and utilizing the technology in there to test out uh, their different products and services. Um, we get a lot of uh, software companies and application companies who are coming in with their alpha or beta versions of their um, products, uh, getting us to help them with those and doing the testing. And we also work on a lot of products as well. So it's a great opportunity, once again, to get some real hands-on information and some real hands-on uh, work with real companies. The Computer Information System, our CIS uh, department here, just another great opportunity uh, to work in our sandbox. And this is also where kind of technology meets business. And this is where they're working on such things as augmented and virtual reality and how businesses can start taking advantage of that. And then we have the lab for economics, accounting, and finance. Uh, this is our LEAF lab. This is in partnership with Ernst & Young. And again, this is really where, for those students who are interested in accounting, economics, or finance, can really once again start going in and utilizing some of the same software that the major accounting firms like Ernst & Young are utilizing in their company today. So again, another opportunity to get some real hands-on experience. And then we have our, our research centers. I have only two on here, but we have several more. We have our Center for Women in Business, and the Center for Women in Business is really designed to help put uh, more women into the C-level positions or the C-suite, as some people might refer to it, but those are your chief information officers, uh, chief um, executive officers, COOs, those types of things, and it really promotes getting women in leadership. Men, don't worry, you can still join too. Uh, that's a big part of it, is that it's a really all-encompassing thing uh, to get everybody involved. We also have the Center for Business Ethics. The Center for Business Ethics was one of the first of its kind. Um, it, started over, um, it started over 40 years ago, and it is really designed to help institute ethical decision-making in everything that you do, particularly from a business perspective. Um, and Bentley University's Center for Business Ethics was one of the first of its kind to really promote and help implement the CEO into organizations. And by that, I mean the chief ethics officer. And the chief ethics officer has become a really important position, particularly in the last 15 to 20 years, in organizations like healthcare, um, finance, and uh, even in business and international business as well. So another great opportunity to get involved with that. <clears throat> Bentley University, we're very fortunate to be ranked in a lot of different areas. Uh, most recently, uh, we were ranked by the uh, Princeton Review as the best business school for 2020 and 2021. We were also ranked as the best online MBA program, once again, by the Princeton Review for 2020 and 2021. I also put this one on here. I know we're focusing on the MBA, but because we had uh, my good friend Emerita on here, I know she has her master's in science. We do have the number two master's in science here in the United States, um, uh, and that was ranked in 2021 by the Financial Times. And then we also have uh, one of the best career services departments. The Princeton Review ranked Bentley University as the number one career services department here in the United States. And, and that for me, honestly, is one of the more important areas because let's face it, when you're getting an MBA or any master's degree for that matter, you're really looking for those work opportunities. So this really gives you and shows just how hard our career services department really helps to find our students opportunities to work. And how do we support that? So our career, our career development office, um, what they're really gonna do, they're gonna do things like career coaching, um, we actually have something called the GCDI course or the Graduate Career Development Intensive course. This is a free six week course that helps you develop yourself um, to help look for opportunities. We also do networking events. Um, the Graduate School Career Development Office, they do over 45 events a year, uh, just specifically for graduate students. Um, that equates to about one a week within the academic year, uh, different events that they're doing. We're doing on-campus recruiting events. Um, well. We were before the pandemic and we are looking forward to getting back to those again here in the fall. We are expecting to have students back again in the fall of this year. Um, they also do your strength-based education and they do all different types of workshops and events to really get you prepared. And you, again, you can see uh, some of the statistics and information that we have here down below. But again, you know, we're looking at almost 90% of our students are working within three months of graduate. And these are just some of the different companies that our students go on to work for. Um, and this is just a small snippet of some of the companies. Obviously, I couldn't fit them all on here. We work with hundreds of different companies um, every single year. And again, with 90% of our students going on to work within three months, you can imagine the list is pretty high. So now to go into the MBA curriculum a little bit, our MBA program 
um, is designed in three sections. We have foundation courses, required courses, and the concentration courses. And the foundation courses are really developed for somebody who maybe doesn't have a traditional business experience, or maybe who comes from an educational background that, you know, where they didn't take business courses. So if you do not have that traditional business background, either professionally or academically, that's okay. You can still apply to Bentley University because we have those foundation courses to prepare you before you get into the required and the concentration courses. And those foundation courses are in statistics, economics, marketing, um, finance, and accounting. And so they really get you prepared to go into those six required courses. And then we have the concentrations. And this is a great opportunity where you are able to make the MBA a little bit of your own. And so we have several different choices that you can choose from. So you can do a concentration in marketing, accountancy, finance, law and taxation, leadership, business analytics, and information systems and technology. And there's even one more that we don't uh, have listed on here, and it's other. Uh, we, you can actually do a general MBA where you don't have any concentration, where you can choose any four courses from, uh, from any one of these areas. So if more than one of these concentrations look interesting to you, so perhaps you're interested in leadership and business analytics, you could do two courses in leadership and two courses in business analytics as part of your program. And so it really gives you that flexibility, once again, to kind of make it your own a little bit as you go through. And we also do offer internships. Um, they're not required. They would be one of your electives, uh, but we'll talk about internships in a little bit. One of the other great things about Bentley University is you can do a dual degree program. Our dual degree program allows you to share up to four courses between your MBA and one of our master's degree programs. So that means that you could add a second master's degree for as little potentially as six courses. So the way that works is you do your MBA or your master's degree first, and then you can transfer or uh, share those four courses with your other master's degree here at Bentley University. And we currently offer a master's degree in business analytics, human factors and information design, that's our, our user experience master's degree, accountancy, accounting analytics, taxation, and finance. So the application process is pretty straightforward. It, if you've looked at any other graduate school, our application process is not very dissimilar. Um, it's two essays, your transcripts, two letters of recommendation. For our full-time MBA program and our online MBA program, there is an interview, uh, official GMAT or GRE scores. And then for our international students, we're looking at a TOEFL or IELTS score as well. And then we need your resume or CV as part of this process. Please do note, uh, I know that uh, for those that are interested in applying for this year, we are still taking applications for our fall 2021 term that starts this September. And then we'll start taking applications for fall of 2022 um, uh, this September where round one is due November 1st. Please note if you are interested in this fall, the application uh, deadline is July 1st of this year. And uh, if you're thinking, oh my goodness, Gordon, I have to take a GMAT score, I have to take a GRE before I can apply, don't worry, we do offer waivers for some people. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to talk to you about potential GMAT or GRE waivers. So uh, you can also use this uh, QR code down here at the bottom. You can use your phone, go ahead, take a picture of that. That'll bring it right over to our, um, our, our webpage, which is at bentley.edu slash graduate. Now, Without any further ado, let's get over to the real reason you're here, which is not to listen to me talk, but to listen to my good friend, Amrita talk a little bit about her experience here at Bentley University. Uh, so I'd like to introduce um, Amrita, uh, Ms. Amrita Chaudhary. Uh, I am very excited to introduce her. She graduated from Bentley University's McCallum Graduate School of Business in 2020 with her MBA and a master's in financial analytics. Prior to joining Bentley, she graduated from Bangalore University and then went on to study at the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. During her time at Bentley University, she held several internships, including one at New ODB as a finance intern. After graduating with her dual degree, she went on to work for Aetna Health, one of the world's largest health and wellness companies, as a senior audit consultant. Recently, really excited to see, that Emerita chose to accept an offer with Wasabi Technology here in Boston, Massachusetts, where she is a senior accountant. Emerita has graciously agreed to share with us her education at Bentley University and how Bentley has helped her to achieve where her goals and where she is today. So without any further ado, I'll introduce Emerita. 
Hi everyone. First of all, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Gordon, for introducing me so well. And thanks Unumi and Bentley University for providing this wonderful opportunity to share my Bentley experience. And trust me, I'm very excited to, you know, to connect with all the students because it's always a fun experience. Uh, moving on to my next slide. So here I'm just going to, you know, quickly add on a few points, like just sharing my background. Like I relocated to US in August uh, 2016. And after that, I started working in Maxima Consulting as a finance manager. So there I worked approximately for two years. And during that journey, I just felt like, you know, it's kind of really important. I felt I have to upgrade my technical skills, my leadership skills. So then I decided to go back to, you know, uh, to school and upgrade, you know, my technical knowledge. And then I pursued MBA and MS in finance analytics. And as Gordon mentioned, I graduated in May 2020. Uh, moving on to next slide. So in this slide, basically, I'll be talking about like, you know, what made me, you know, pursue my career in Bentley University. Definitely like, you know, like all other students, I did a lot of research, you know, checking other universities. And these are the couple of points which I felt would be really helpful for all the international students, you know, to take their call whether they want to move forward with Bentley University. What I found was that Bentley program was really competitive. The kind of program, it was kind of blend of like, you know, quantitative courses, qualitative courses. It had like, you know, the program was really well balanced. So that kind of really made me feel more comfortable about, you know, the courses at Bentley. And the other thing which I liked about Bentley was that the professors are really well renowned. What I learned that they're really well equipped with, you know, world class teaching style. So that kind of gave me a comfort zone that, you know, I will be in a safer hand, basically. And uh, other thing which I liked about Bentley was the courses offered here was kind of very practical oriented and which you can, you know, easily use in your day to day business world. And I can still feel that there's so many courses like which I did in Bentley, I'm able to apply in my day to day, you know, business activities. And coming to like ranking, I think this is one of the most important aspect which all students, you know, would agree with me. Even I did a research on Bentley ranking and what in 2018, what I noticed that, you know, Bentley was ranked as, you know, the best college in regional university, it stood at second position. So that was really, you know, amazing factor to be considered and it stood at, you know, 64th rank during that time in business program. So I think that is something really, you know, nice about Bentley University. And the most important part is like, you know, whenever you pursue your career, you know, you want to upgrade your master's education, you really want to make sure like, you know, the university has really, you know, well-renowned career service. And I was really amazed to see that, you know, Bentley was ranked number one in the nation by Princeton's review in 2018. So that kind of, you know, placed me in a more comfort zone that, okay, this is the university I would really want to, you know, move ahead with. So moving on to my next slide. So here I'm going to talk a little bit more about like, you know, what, how my journey was at Bentley, what I learned in Bentley. So these are the five things which always comes to my mind whenever I think of Bentley. You can see a picture which I put, you know, next to it. Like it is like you can, it, you can see like, you know, how much fun experience I had, like, you know, collecting all possible goodies at Bentley. So it was kind of this two years journey at Bentley was so much of fun. I can't tell you. I feel like, you know, I have become a completely different version of myself, more confident about everything. And most importantly, which I, what I've learned at Bentley is it helped me in enhancing my leadership skills. Like there were so many courses offered here, like, you know, leading responsibly, global strategy, global leadership, and a couple of all other courses. I felt that those courses were like, you know, it really helped me in improving my overall, you know, leadership style, understanding where do I stand, where I need to improve my leadership skills. So that was really helpful. And uh, other thing was, uh, it also helped me in enhancing my technical skills because there were a lot of courses like, you know, strategic IT alignment, managing with analytics. And as you all know that currently everything is moving in analytics. Everything right now is become like, you know, like about analytics, starting from the shopping, like whatever you do, you know, in your day-to-day -day activity, everything is linked to analytics. And this was something which was completely new to me. And trust me, these courses really helped me to understand how analytics is changing our life. And that really helped me to learn more about analytics. And, uh, Definitely, it also helped me in enhancing my collaborative skills because in Bentley, you, you will be like, you know, involved in so many group projects, 
group activities where you have to take the lead responsibility, you have to manage your timing, you have to collaborate with team. And I myself have taken, you know, lead on so many projects and I was able to do a really good job. So I was able to understand like, you know, in pressure situation, you know, how do you collaborate and how do you meet your deadlines? So that was really helpful. And it also helped me in enhancing my strategic thinking capability because most of the MBA courses are case-based studies where, you know, you have to read the case studies, analyze it, interpret it and apply in your business, you know, different business scenarios. So I think like this really helped me. In fact, right now also, you know, in, at my work, I feel like, you know, I'm able to go back and understand, okay, this is how what I've learned in this particular case study. And this is how, you know, I can implement those strategies in my current, uh, you know, work situation. And the last one is like, you know, build professional and personal network. I will say that this is the most important thing which I learned at Bentley. And uh, uh, I think Gordon already mentioned there's a GCDI course, which is offered to all the students. Uh, I mean, this is the course where, you know, they'll help you, you know, in grooming you, they'll help you in uh, like, you know, how your resume should look like, how your LinkedIn profile should look like. They basically, they would prep you with, they will help you in job search. They will help you connect with the employers. So, and uh, during this course, I really understood, you know, the importance of networking. Uh, so this was one of the key aspects which I learned at Betley and which has helped me in, you know, in my long-term career growth. I would definitely talk more about this. So moving on to my next slide here, I'm just going to touch upon like, you know, about my favorite professors at Bentley. So Jill Brown, she was, she's been like one of my favorite professors. She was taking our global strategy, strategy course. And trust me, this course was like such a fun experience for me reading, interpreting all the case studies, understanding, you know, different strategies, how different companies work, you know, analyze, interpret their data. So this was kind of really fun experience, uh, you know, about this whole course. And the other one was Irish Bedro. She was taking our global leadership uh, course. So as you can see a picture which has been placed here, this is a picture from her class. She gave us an assignment where, you know, there were different groups all together and we had to bridge, we had to create, you know, a bridge and then we had to collaborate with two different team. And, you know, we had to have different kind of strategy. So it was such a fun experience, like, you know, how a leader should act, you know, when you are in a global situation. And as you see, there are all the people who are from different countries and we have never, you know, connected with each other and we had to build that particular bridge. So it was kind of really fun experience. Like, uh, and I took this winter intensive class and I thought this course is going to be really stressful, but trust me, her teaching style was so good that I did not realize that this was a course at all. It was really fun experience and I learned a lot, you know, in this particular course. Uh, moving on to next slide. So here I'm going to talk about my favorite project at Bentley University. You can see a cool picture of me here, like, you know, going to the class. We had like a presentation due that day. So I was really excited about this project. So this is the project uh, which we got in our global strategy course. So this project was all about like there were two companies which was provided to us and we had to do a comparison of these two retail companies. So we had to download their financials, calculate their financial ratios, interpret. Basically, it was all about interpreting their financial data, analyzing it, comparing their strategies, how the companies are performing, read their financial annual reports and understand like, you know, what is company's strengths, weakness, opportunity. And based on that, we had to draw a conclusion. So I kind of felt that this was kind of really a practical project, which everybody would like to know more. And uh, it kind of really gave me overall perspective, like, you know, how you should be thinking from business mind. So this was really a fun project. And in fact, we did really good in this project. So yeah, it was really interesting. So moving on to my next slide. So this is the most important slide where I'm going to you know, spend more time and I'm going to talk more about my key takeaways. Uh, there are a couple of pictures which I'll definitely you know, talk to you guys more about that. So first important thing which I want everybody, you know, I would recommend everybody to think on is like participate actively in university event. I think uh, like Gordon did mention like we have a lot of like events happening, like there are a lot of networking event. We have like, you know, so many fun experience. As you see, there's a picture of me holding a poster here. So I did part, I was a part of like, you know, graduate student association. I was a treasury. 
And I did run for president election as well. You can see me holding a poster there. I mean, unfortunately, I lost the election, but trust me, it was it was worth. I mean, the whole experience, like, you know, how the campaigning happens, like I was able to build so many network and contact during that time. So all I want to say is like, it is very important, especially for international student to, you know, participate actively in the campus because that will help you to add on to your network. And moving on to other point is like you, it's very important, you know, for us, uh, for all the students to work very closely with the career service team. I think I already mentioned about our GCDI course in my earlier slide. So, uh, I mean, uh, for international students, since you are new to US, it's very important, you know, to take someone's, you know, counseling and advice. And I think career service team, they are there to help all the international students. They will be able to guide you, like, you know, they'll be able to prep you, like, before you meet employer, how you should talk to them, how you should interact with them, because, you know, you are new to this country and you have to understand, like, you know, how you have to know, you know, the culture, how to interact with employers. So work very closely with the career service team. And the other thing, which is the most important thing is focus on your soft skill. And I, we know that MBA is all about that. I mean, like a lot of people, they do have, you know, different skill set, but we all are here because we want to improve our soft skills. We want to improve our leadership skills, communication skills. And that is something which I would recommend all of us, you know, to prep really well on your soft skill. And the other thing is like uh, uh, explore Bentley campus, uh, you know, work opportunity. Uh, as you can see uh, my picture here, I was working in graduate admission as uh, their ambassador. And you can see a picture of all of us. These, This is my team people from graduate admissions. So this was one of the most fun experience. I think in my 10 years of my career, this was the most fun job which I've done. And I can never forget this experience. All I want to say is that it's very important, uh, especially for international students to, you know, keep on adding on to your work experience because since you are new here, you really want your, you know, resume to be, you know, to stand out when you go and apply for a job. And as long as you keep working here, like, you know, you get to experience, you know, the US culture, you get to, you know, add on more to your network. So, you know, do try to take advantage of that because there are a lot of opportunities in the campus where, you know, you can explore and you can work. Uh, other thing is that which I have experienced from, you know, uh, from my own experience is like focus on your area of interest. I mean, this is something like, you know, everybody has their different experience, but what I've noticed, like usually people try to see what others are doing. I mean, it's good to take advice, but it's very important to know, like, what do you want to do? So uh, have a clarity on that. And based on that, you know, take a counseling and advice from your, from your professors or either from a career service team or your friends. So that is something which I thought, you know, would be advisable. And last but not the least is networking. I think this is something which I would want to talk more about. Uh, uh, what I want to say is like, most important thing is that, uh, you know, what I have learned in Bentley is like, you know, keep on adding on to your network, whether it could be your personal network or professional network, you don't know what is going to, you know, help you in your long term career growth. Uh, trust me, like I got my, uh, you know, my campus job through my friend, she referred me there. And that's how like I was able to work in Bentley admissions. I got my internship, you can see a picture, I've just placed a picture of new DB, that was a place where I did my finance internship. And that also I was able to secure through my personal network. And when I graduated in May 2020, I was working with Aetna, CVS Health, and that is like a, you know, a third largest insurance company in US. And that was that also I was able to secure through my charter account and professional network. And currently I'm working in Wasabi. Uh, and this also I was able to secure my through my professional network. So you can understand, like, you know, when I came to US, trust me, I did not knew that, you know, networking is such a powerful tool. But when I myself, I experienced it, I felt like it's it's really worth, it takes time for everyone to build network, but it's, it's, no, it's not that tough. I mean, definitely, you know, slowly and gradually you'll be able to, you know, build your really good network, professional or personal. So I think that is all from my side. Uh, thank you all for patiently listening to me. Wonderful, thank you so much, Amrita. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit about yourself. So at this point, uh, I think we're gonna get uh, Zoranitsa to come back here. We're gonna do the questions for the panel today. Um, so if you do have any questions, you can go ahead and place them in either the chat box or in the Q&A. And I, I believe we had some uh, that came through. So I'll, I'll turn it over to, um, to Zornitsa. 
Great, thanks, Gordon. Well, yes, indeed, we have received a few questions. I'll try to um, sum them up. Um, the first one uh, refers to the importance of tests and test scores. You mentioned that there is a GMAT waiver, but we received a question about the English language uh, tests and is there an option for an IELTS waiver? So it would be great if you could elaborate more on this. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, we, we do offer a, a sort of an IELTS waiver um, in the sense that, you know, if you have graduated from a US institution or an institution from the UK, Australia, Canada, as a few other countries, um, we will consider waiving the, um, the TOEFL or the IELTS for you. Um, and so, you know, th that's the main way to get the TOEFL waiver if you've completed a degree in any one of those countries in the country. And you can check that list out on our website. Um, the other issue too, sometimes we do offer waivers depending on your status here in the US, um, or if you have some extensive work experience working in English. So, you know, if you are, let's say in India and you work for an American company or a UK company, and you, you know, you, you, you know, you use English every single day in a professional capacity, then we may consider it um, in that sense. And so, you know, if we see that you have that extensive experience professionally in English, um, what we would typically do is we'd look to do a TOEFL interview with you, um, you know, where you'd talk with myself or my colleague Anya or one of our other colleagues. And then after that, we'd ask for a writing sample uh, in a professional setting. So there is some opportunities for that. Uh, but again, you know, it's, it's each individual case, you can send an email to either myself or Anya, and we'd be happy to talk with you a little bit more about the option to potentially waive your, uh, your TOEFL or your IELTS exam. Um, if you have taken the TOEFL or IELTS, please note the minimum TOEFL score that we accept is 100 or better. And for the IELTS, it's seven or better. Thanks, Gordon. Um, and as uh, most of our attendees come from different parts of the world, uh, outside USA, they're quite interested in the visa and visa support topics. Uh, could you tell us more about uh, the support services that you provide to students? Yeah, uh, Anya, do you wanna take this one? Sure, happy to. So we have a lot of resources on our campus. I think Gordon mentioned earlier that we do have a lot of international students at Bentley. So we have a lot of resources for international students, including our Center for International Students and Scholars. And you'll be able to work with them once you have decided you're going to attend Bentley, you've put down your deposit, told us that you're gonna be joining us as a student. You'll be able to work with both our office and our Center for International Students and Scholars to help you get all of that paperwork together so that you can get that I-20, you can get that F-1 visa so that you can join us here at Bentley. They'll be able to work with you, answer all of your questions, help you figure out what the right steps are, if you'll be coming with family, how to get their documents processed as well. So you'll have resources through Bentley. Great, thanks, Anya. And we just received one quite practical question. Uh, is there, are there any scholarships that are provided by the university? I can take this one, Gordon. So we do have a lot of scholarships. They are all merit-based. So they're all gonna be based on the quality of your application. And it's a pretty simple process to apply for a scholarship. There's a question on the application that is, do you wanna be considered for merit aid? If you click yes, you'll be considered for merit aid. And really we offer awards to our top applicants. So not everyone does receive a scholarship, but for students who do, I'd say the average award is about 20% awards come as a percentage of tuition. And they generally range from 10 to 40 to 50% or so with that average being around 20%. So we're looking at all of the different aspects of your application. So any test scores you submit, we are looking at your essays, your letters of recommendation, your resume, your grades, really all of those different things that we're asking you to submit, we look at them as pieces of a larger puzzle when we're deciding who, who we can really award those scholarships to. Yeah, and that's so true. And I just wanna jump in real quick because uh, Emrita mentioned this, is we also offer graduate assistantships. This is not a scholarship per se, but it is an opportunity to earn money while you're here. Um, these, you know, uh, I know Emrita talked about um, working here on campus. And so we have these graduate assistantships that are awarded to you where you can work in one of our departments or in one of our research centers or with one of our professors. 
Um, it's about 20 hours a week on average. It is money paid directly to you. Um, so it's not necessarily a scholarship, but it is money that you can use to pay for, you know, things like transportation and food. Please note it won't cover all of your cost of living, but it will at least help in covering some of your expenses. So again, this isn't necessarily a scholarship, but it is something that you can get awarded as an opportunity to earn a little bit additional money while you're here on campus. And again, it's about 20 hours a week. All right, um, then the next question, are there any internships, business projects, or other forms of hands-on experience during the program? I think that Amrita mentioned uh, a strategy product, project that, that she liked particularly, but maybe it would be good for, for our attendees uh, to have a few more examples. Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. So there's tons of opportunities to work with real companies and, and on real projects. And, and then Marita, I know you talked about one, I don't know if you had any others that you could talk about if you work with any other projects or, real, or companies or things while you were here. Um, but I know that um, I know. Well, I, you know, I I will say uh, I'm going to plug myself for a second here. I also earned my MBA at Bentley University recently, and um, I worked on a couple of different projects uh, with some real companies. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my case studies um, that I that I wrote from one of my professors here at, at Bentley. Um, he actually produces a a book that's I think it's in its seventh or eighth edition. He's been writing it for many years, um, where he um, puts together current uh, case studies on real business situations. And he took the, the, the case study that I did, that I wrote uh, and did research on, and he's putting it in his book. So it's gonna be coming out in a, in a couple of months, which I'm really excited about. So there's tons of opportunities for, uh, for things like that, um, to work with real companies and real projects. So um, Emery, I don't know if you wanna mention anything else that you worked on while you were here. Yeah, I think I can just add on that, uh, like, as like there are different projects where like uh, the one which I mentioned already, there were other projects which I worked on, uh, like where when I was doing my managing with analytics during that time also, I had like, you know, different case studies, which I had to, you know, go through. And there was a project where we had to do research. And in fact, we researched on our COVID cases during that time, the COVID was emerging and that was kind of really hot topic. So we, our group, like we decided to, you know, to do use our analytics skills and understand what's happening around the world. And we used our, you know, technical skills and we kind of presented that work in a team. So that was kind of a uh, really interesting, a uh, very uh, practical oriented project, which I got opportunity to work on. Let me mention one more too. Thank you, Emirate. I just remembered one more that I worked on. Um, I, one of my, in one of my classes, we were doing uh, another case study research and the, the partner that I had, she happened to be an, um, a, a director for Dell Technologies, um, working in marketing and research. And so we worked on a project together where we utilized um, information from Dell Technologies with a company called Top Golf. And this company, um, they are a entertainment company, which uh, is all about golfing. Uh, it's indoor golfing where they have golfing driving ranges. And it's a lot of technology where, you know, you hit this golf ball out into a driving range and then it has sensors and technology uh, that, is, that is sold and provided by Dell Technologies to this company. And so you can play like games of the largest, of the farthest drive or the closest to the pin. And they have food and drinks and entertainment um, and like big screens and all these things that you can play all these different games on while you're golfing. And the technology that they utilize is a lot to do with, you know, analytics and sensors and motion detection within um, and technology within the golf balls, within the clubs. And so we did a big research project on this. Um, particular case where we utilized information from Dell Technologies and this company called Top Golf, um, which I know is not only here in the US, it's in Europe, um, in the Middle East, and I think they are emerging in Africa as well. So it was a pretty interesting, so there's another example as well. So tons of opportunities to really get some experience. Hopefully that helps Zenit to answer all those questions. Great, thanks, Anya and Gordon. Uh, we have received uh, a couple of new questions. Um, is there only a September intake or a January intake is available too? If yes, are there GMAT or GRE wa waivers available for the next intakes? Sure, so we do have a fall intake and a spring intake. So you can apply to start in both September or in January. And those waivers that we're talking about, they're not specific to September or to January, we're able to award waivers 
um, and to grant waivers, I should say, based on whether or not you have the qualification. So for those GMAT waivers, the way you can get those, the GMAT or the GRE waived is if you've graduated in the last five years from an appropriately accredited institution and you have a 3.2 GPA or higher, if you have a previous master's or if you have five or more years of relevant work experience. So if you have those things, it doesn't, you don't have to specifically apply in the fall or the spring. You'll be able to get that waiver whenever it is you choose to apply. Thanks, Anya. And um, I believe Gordon mentioned that there are different, there are students with many different uh, backgrounds and not all necessarily in a uh, business background. Uh, but how do you see people who have worked in family businesses? Because we have one question from someone who had strong leadership experience, but during the pandemic, they focused more on, they worked more uh, in the family business. So um, are you open to people who have worked on the smaller family business scale? Absolutely. We have people who come from all different backgrounds studying at Bentley. So working in a family business, I, I saw the question that is, that's not something that is a limiting factor. We want to hear your perspective in the classroom. We think that you'll bring something different than someone who might have worked for a different kind of company. So that is certainly not a knock on your application at all. I know that was something the person who asked was worried about. But so long as you're able to bring that perspective and what you were able to do in that job, working for your family business, that's something that could likely benefit you in the classroom. Great, um, thanks, Anya. Um, actually, we have, I think we have covered all the questions that concern the MBA, but I think uh, it would be useful if we can uh, hear a little bit more from Anya, about how, how did she prepare for, for the MBA and for the admissions? And if she has any tips uh, and recommendations to share with our candidates. Amrita, I think that one's for you. Oh yeah, sure. I thought like, okay, this is this question is for me. Uh, so uh, sure, Zanita, I mean, uh, my experience was that like since I was already in US, so I was a little bit at a comfort zone, I would say, because I already knew a little bit about the work culture here. But yeah, going to the school was completely new experience for me. So definitely I had to do a lot of research. Like as I already mentioned, like I did a lot of research about the college. And there were a lot of my friends who had already applied for those, you know, for Bentley University. So I did, con you know, contacted with them to understand what would be the entire, you know, process. And I was actually, uh, uh, you know, I was connected with Gordon. I think Gordon was the one who helped me in my entire uh, MBA process. So I think like the most, I did not find any difficulty. I was able to get in touch with admissions. They were, you know, responding to all my question. Uh, I was like really well prepared because uh, I had to apply. It was told to me that, you know, I have to write an essay. And since I was already here, I got waived from TOEFL. So I did not have to worry about that. And I was coming, you know, from nine plus years of work experience. So like, you know, my GMAT was also waved off. So that was kind of like, like, you know, that was kind of an easy thing for me to do. So all I had to worry about my recommendation letter and I had to worry about the essay writing. And I was so passionate, you know, to do my MBA that, you know, writing those essays was was not at all difficult part for me because I feel like once you are passionate that you really want to go and go ahead and, you know, uh, pursue this education, you know, I'm sure you're going to do your best. So I did not find any difficulty, but a lot of people did mention like they had like visa support. So even I went for that because I had to go for F1 visa. So I got like all, you know, support from Bentley University or uh, their, uh, you know, international center service is there where, you know, they can guide you with the visa sponsorship facilities as well. So, I mean, I did not face any difficulty. All I had to do, like, you know, get in contact with my friends, you know, who had to do my recommendation because that's kind of really important professional and personal recommendation, essay writing, and I was able to apply. Everything was pretty much very, a very smooth process. Great, thanks, Amrita. So we, we heard about your experience before the MBA and during the MBA. And now we have a question for you about how, how things changed for you after you completed the MBA. How did the career opportunities and uh, your position change afterwards? 
Yeah, sure. So I think uh, best part is like after I graduated, trust me, like Bentley is such a well reputed and recognized university that wherever I've interviewed so far, they're like, okay, you have graduated from Bentley. So that itself, you know, kind of like, you know, uh, uh, I was able to feel that, you know, uh, extra edge, like, you know, that I have graduated from such a reputed university. And uh, whenever I have interviewed, like I was, I felt that, you know, my learning at Bentley really helped me to prep really well whenever I've gone for any kind of interview, my confidence level, you know, my uh, my communication skills, my networking skill was so much of improved that, you know, I was able to, uh, I just want to share my experience. Like when I graduated, I graduated right at the time of pandemic. And yeah, definitely like, unlike like other students, even I did struggle because entire world was struggling during that time. But trust me, like I settled and I got like three full time offers during pandemic. So you could imagine like, you know, how helpful the, uh, you know, university, everybody was really helpful, you know, to, you know, get me in you know, contact with the other person, like who was able to give me like, you know, kind of a networking tip. So each and every tip really helped me, you know, to move further in my career and Right now, I feel that, you know, I am at this position because, you know, the kind of experience and the kind of expertise which I gained from Bentley University. Thanks, Amrita, for sharing this with, with our attendees. Uh, since you mentioned uh, COVID, uh, we have a question about uh, some someone who is uh, worried about the exams during the COVID. So uh, this question is rather, I think, to Anya or to Gordon. Is it possible to take GM, to take GMAT and GRE uh, tests online? Yeah, so you can. Um, I know that uh, the GRE and the GMAT are currently offering online home sessions that you can take. And we do accept those, so you can go ahead and take that those versions at home. Um, they those pro, those those slots do fill up pretty quickly, so just make sure you go online sooner rather than later. Um, but go on to either the GMAT or the GRE website. Uh, you can register on there, um, make your payments, and then schedule your test, uh, and then just do it right from home. And absolutely, we do accept those. And if you have any issues, you know, finding that or 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 trying to get in touch with them, you know, again, you can reach out to either Anya or myself, and we can work with you a little bit on that. And helping you find those, um, you know, those areas of those sessions where you can take that uh, that GMAT or that the GRE from home online. But yeah, absolutely, we do accept it. Right. Um, I remember that you you um, explained to us more about the visa and the visa support offered by the university. Uh, but uh, do you know if age could be uh, a reason for a refusal of a visa? Um, is there in general, are there in general limitations that, limitations that you're aware of? So, I mean, obviously it's different for each person. Um, I, you know, uh, one of the things, you know, in, in looking to study in the United States, you know, you do have to go for an interview. And so as part of the application process, you're gonna go and you're gonna do an in-person interview. Um, with somebody in the U.S. consulate. And one of the things that you want to make sure is they're going to ask you and look for, okay, what are your ties to your home country? Because the student visa is not an immigration visa. That is, so you need to understand that you are coming to study in the U.S., you're coming to learn, uh, you're coming to get, gain some experiences. And then the idea is that you would then um, move back home. And so when you go and you visit and you do your interview with the US consulate, they're looking for, okay, what ties do you still have to your home country? Whether that's, do you still have a job waiting for you when you come back? Um, is your family there? Is, do you own property there? You know, what, what is it that, that's, that still has an anchor for you in your home country? Because what they don't wanna see is, you know, oh, this person's just gonna come and try to stay in the US Ill illegally. Not that we think any of you would wanna do that, but you just want to make sure that you look for those opportunities to demonstrate that you do have ties to your home country, that you are going to come back um, when you get that student visa, when you're applying for that student visa. Because again, it is not an immigration visa um, as part of that process. And, and Emerita, I know you went through that. I don't know if you had anything else to add to that. Yeah, sure, Gordon. So I think this, uh, my experience was like similar, like what Gordon mentioned, like it is very important, like when you go for visa interview, 
you have to show that you know you're going to come back to your own country because this is all about like you're going you know you're coming to us to upgrade your education and then you have you know strings attached to back to your country you have those like you know you have to they may ask you like you know what are you working on like and you know about your family background like are you going to come back so you have to make sure like you know you're answering those questions really strategically very well so that you know they shouldn't they shouldn't think that you know you're going to come and stay here your your whole purpose right now is just your education so that is something which you know should be really clear in your mind and definitely they you have to you know provide information on your financial information because they want to make sure like you know you're financially you're going to take care of yourself when you're going to be in us so i think those things are the major requirement when you go for an interview yeah and, absolutely oh, and oh, oh, sorry go ahead amir okay Yeah sure also i was just mentioning it as it is like bentley has really well you know it's a reputed organization reputed university so trust me when i went for my interview i was very stressed out like i don't know how many questions they are going to ask but they did not ask me any much questions at all they saw okay this is bentley university they saw okay i had been working like they they did not had any like all you want is that they should not have any question mark about you like you know you're just going to go there study and like you know pursue your career so that's all i think it should not be that bad yeah i was that, that's exactly what i was going to say amr is just that you know when you're applying for a student visa they do take into consideration the type of education that you're going to get um and the type of institution that you're applying to and and we're very fortunate i mean all of us here at bentley myself on you everyone here the professors all the way up to our president of the institution you know reputation of our institution is incredibly important to all of us and so you know when you go and you know emerita mentioned it a couple of times and you talk to people that you attended bentley you're going to get you're going to get oh okay they understand the reputation they understand the seriousness of of how we take our education here um and that we do go through a a pretty strong uh, review process of an applicant before we let them in and so you know a lot of consulates and and Anya and I you know pre pandemic and hopefully post pre soon are fortunate enough to do a lot of travel and we do go and we talk to counselors we talk to consulates we talk to different agencies um and continually keeping them updated on what Bentley is doing the, the steps that we're taking um the work that we're doing for our students and how seriously we take our students and and how much we want to see them be successful um in in coming to Bentley you know that's why we're so fortunate to have a lot of alumni like Emerita who are so successful or are so well articulated and who want to do some amazing things now i will say that you know it, things can change and we realize that um you know you can come here on an f1 uh status um you can stay in the US after you graduate and do something called OPT for those of you that are not familiar with OPT it's optional practical training and this allows you to stay on a traditional degree or ma- like undergrad or master's degree for one year however if you apply and graduate from a STEM program and STEM stands for science technology engineering and math so if you graduate from a program that is designated as a STEM degree and it must be designated a STEM degree program you can't assume that it is you want to make sure you ask like our masters in finance and analytics the one that Emrita did you can actually stay longer um here in the US on your F1 visa but at the end of that OPT session and i believe it's 3 years you would um have to return home to your country or at that time you could potentially um apply for uh an H1B visa or other types of visas um but there is a a a limit on on that factor word so it's still an opportunity to get some experience while you're here it's still an opportunity to get to bring back some international business experience um and again Bentley is very happy to work with you and help you through our center for international students and scholars on you and I here in the graduate admissions office to make you feel comfortable as you go through that process cuz as I remember I said it can be stressful and it can be it can be overwhelming especially when you're going into a government official office in a foreign country but I can promise you Bentley is here to help support you assist you um and and we'll make sure that you feel as confident as you can going into those different types of interviews you just got to communicate with us speak with us and and we'll do everything we can I'm sure you do <laughs> thanks Gordon well we have two two more questions that are related to the admissions requirements the first one is about the difference between the requirements towards the online MBA and the traditional full-time MBA program 
And the second one uh, actually is about the requirements uh, for the master's in business analytics. I know that uh, the topic today is the MBA, but since you mentioned that uh, you can do in parallel, uh, in addition to the MBA, you can uh, you can also graduate a master's degree. Maybe uh, it's something that you, you you are aware of. Sure. So in terms of the MBA at Bentley, one thing I'll mention is that no matter which format you get your MBA and you're getting the same MBA, it is, it's an MBA from Bentley. It's simply your choice of how you're taking the courses, whether you're taking them in the accelerated online program, if you're doing them part-time, you're taking them online, you're taking them in person. And so we are evaluating your application to make sure you'll be able to succeed in the Bentley MBA program, not specific to the online format or the in-person format. So, you know, there's no significant difference in terms of how we're looking at your application in terms of online versus in person. It's simply, will you be able to succeed in these classes? In terms of the master's in business analytics, we are similarly looking for students who can succeed in the program. So we're looking for students who have strong grades from their undergraduate institution, who have good letters of recommendation that talk about a a potential student's ability to succeed either in a workplace or in a classroom or both. We're looking for students who can talk effectively in their essays about what they wanna do with their education. Ultimately, we, we wanna see in a similar way to the, what we talked about with the MBA, we wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to thrive at Bentley and then take that education out into the world and be a successful analytics professional. Great. Um, then since we are kind of running out of time, uh, I would uh, like to ask Amrita, um, why, why Bentley? Why did you choose Bentley and why others should do that as well? Yeah, sure, Zonesta. So as I already mentioned, like I did, you know, as unlike like other all other students, I did a lot of research about Bentley and there were a lot of my friends who were already studying in Bentley. So I kind of got like, you know, personal views from them, uh, you know, in terms of about their professors, about their reputation, about, you know, the college ranking. So that kind of made me, you know, uh, put me in a very comfort zone that this is the kind of university, you know, I would like to go ahead. And most importantly, since I am from CPA background, and I know that uh, like uh, Bentley is really well renowned for finance and accounting, and I wanted to do my MBA with finance as my concentration. So that was also one of the reason like, you know, why I chose Bentley, because I knew like Bentley finance and accounting programs are really good. And most importantly, like, you know, you, you would see that you know, all big fours, they're always in Bentley because like, you know, they're really well reputed for finance and accounting. So, I mean, that was, that was the reason like, you know, why I chose Bentley. Great, thank you very much, Amrita. Uh, well, I think we will manage to answer all of the questions. Uh, I thank you very much, uh, Gordon, Anya and Amrita. It was really, a, really a very informational and inspiring session. So I believe uh, we managed to help uh, our attendees make their decision about studying at Bentley. Um, do you have uh, some final words to say? Yeah, absolutely. Zornitsa, thank you to Unimai for having us here today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Emrita, for coming and, and representing Bentley. We're always so proud of you. And thank you for coming and talking to us and sharing your experiences. And Anya, thank you as well for being here. Um, once again, and all of you for participating in today's session, we really appreciate it. Thank you for considering Bentley University. If you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to myself or Anya, we're happy to, to answer any additional questions you have. Um, if you have any additional questions that, you know, that maybe comes up later on for uh, either us or even Amrita, feel free to email us. We'll, we'll get the answers for you. We can reach out to Amrita to get those answers for you. Um, but with that, thank you so much. We look forward to, to hopefully hearing from you soon, uh, maybe even seeing an application. And if you are interested, mention that you saw us today here on this Unimai platform. And Anya and I will be willing to offer you an application fee waiver form so you can apply to the university for free. Save yourself $150 as our little gift um, uh, for joining us here today. So once again, thank you to everybody. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.